So in this video, we're going to look at a problem uh, for problem from chapter four. So this particular example, 4.1, is directly from the textbook. So what this problem illustrates is that um, there exists a systematic approach for a long-term capacity plan. So what is this systematic approach? First, and the first step in the systematic approach is to estimate the future requirements. And the second step is to understand what are current capabilities. And third is to compare um, the current capabilities with the future requirements. And if there is a gap between those two, then uh, we may have to uh, come up with an alternative plan to address that gap. Let's apply that systematic approach framework on this particular problem. Maybe this is a great time for you guys to pause this video and take a uh, look at this problem a little bit more carefully and then come back and play it back on. So uh, let's see what is the their current capability. So this particular copy center has three copying machines. Uh, so their current capability is three machines, right? And um, and they wanted to know in future how many machines they need to buy or how many machines they need to have in order to satisfy the demand. So which they don't know. But what they given us is the annual demand forecast and other uh, key details. So based on the detail, we have to calculate how many number of machines they have to have in the future in order to satisfy the customer demand. So in this particular problem, they have this copy center has two uh, clients. One is client X, client, client X, and then second is client Y. And client X has an annual demand forecast of 2,000 copies. And client Y has the annual demand of forecast of 6,000 copies. And they also have uh, something called standard processing time. Uh, indicates how long it would take for them to prepare one copy. So for client X, it takes almost half an hour. Client Y, it takes 0.7 hour. And there is another key detail they have given us, one which is called as average lot size. Average lot size indicates the maximum number of copies that can be uh, produced or created with one setup, right? So client X, but a client for client X, they can actually prepare 20 copies. For client Y, uh, it is 30 copies. So in order to set the machine, a copying machine for client X, for one setup, they have to spend 0.25 hours. And similarly, they have to spend 0.4 hours for client Y. So based on these details, uh, we may have to first come up with the total number of hours required. Right, total these two clients X and Y. They need to understand how many they require. So in this case, let's take a look at what is total processing time for client X. So client X has two thousand copies annual demand. This is per year. For every copy, they have to spend half an hour. So in total, they have to spend 1,000 hours in an year to satisfy the client X demand. Similarly, client Y has 6,000 copies of demand. And for each copy, they have to spend 0.7 hours. Total, 4,200 hours. So that is the total processing time for client X and client Y. Now, we have to look at the total setup time for client X. For client X, total setup time is the following. <clears throat> they have 2,000 copies as an annual demand. Now, for every time they set up, they manufacture or create 20 copies. So 2,000 divided by 20 gives you the total number of setups in that year for client X. So just nothing but 
hundred times they have to set up the machine, right? So every time they set up the machine, they have to spend 0.25 hours, right? So given that they are setting up hundred times, hundred times 0.25, right, is Twenty-five hours. Now, if you do the same thing for client Y, they have six thousand copies as annual demand. For for client Y, the average lot size is thirty. So six thousand by thirty uh, gives them two hundred times they have to set up, right? And then for every setup they have to spend 0.4 hours, right? For every setup, they have to spend 0.4 hours. So in this case, 200 times 0.4 is 80 hours, right? So now, you have to add up total hours Rocket, rocket number of total hours is 1000 plus 25. This is for uh, client X right? plus 4200 plus 80. That is for client Y. So total put together it's 1025, 4280, which is equal to five total put together it is five thousand three hundred and oh five now we want to look at how many number of hours they have total of hours available per machine so the <coughs> 250 days, they work 250 days per year. Every day they have eight hour shift. So that is the total number of available hours. But at the same time, they wanted to give a cushion of 15%. What this cushion is that um, they are not going to plan the work for the entire, the entire available hours. They're going to plan for only certain amount of hours and the rest they're going to consider it as a cushion. So that this cushion can be used to address the uncertainty in the future demand. So if the demand increases, they can use the cushion to address that particular demand. So in our case, the cushion is 15%. So one minus 0.5 is 0.85. So 85%, right? So it's 258.85. So in this case, it amounts to 2000 times 0.85 which is 1700 hours right so out of 2000 only they're going to plan only for 1700 the rest 300 is considered as cushion right so now this is our last step total number of machines required is Total number of hours required that divided by total number of hours available right, per machine. So, what are the total number of hours is 5305 divided by total number of hours available is 1700 which leads to 3.120 machines since machines can be fraction you would always round the <coughs> round this number up rounding up 3.12 leads to four machines now, going back to our uh, original idea of the systematic approach, they currently they have 
three machines, right? And the future, based on the future requirements, we found out they should have four machines, right? So there is a gap. There's a gap of one machine now. So they, they somehow have to purchase this one machine for the future use. So that's this is the end of the video. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much.